Hi there, Scott here. Welcome to the channel. Today is the day when I'm sending this four month old 4900K CPU back to Intel for a warranty replacement. The RMA has been finished from my end. Uh, we're gonna get to how did I figure it out that this is actually a CPU issue. Uh, before we do that, uh, let me just uh, tell you all the communication between uh, myself and Intel, starting from uh, setting up uh, uh, a support ticket, checking the warranty, what was required, what was not required, what was the most surprisingly part, how easy this process is actually was, how much time it actually took to get to this point, and what was the most frustrating part, which has actually got nothing to do with Intel itself. So uh, August the 14th, I created an account at Intel. On this particular site, you can see in front of you, here's the link. Before I did that, I clicked on check warranty, and turns out on this box CPU, I had five year warranty uh, this is 2024 and the warranty expires in 2029 in my case so I said okay let's create a support ticket Intel surprisingly only asked me four things to do first of all the serial number from the box the product ID from the box uh, if you don't have the box I don't know how can you get uh, the serial number out of the CPU I tried multiple methods why the CPU was still installed in my PC and I couldn't get to it if you know please let me know I will pin it uh, to the comment section to the top uh, other than that Intel uh, required to have the Intel support assistant to be installed on my system which was already there uh, this is what I use Intel is checking technically what kind of components do I have Intel related it's a CPU it's a graphic chip maybe you have an Intel uh, based uh, network card an Intel based uh, Wi-Fi card it's just constantly checking there is any new driver available downloads the latest and greatest so this is what Intel uh, asked me to use uh, download this uh, assistant click on detailed report when you click that it collects basic information That's, I think it's probably a two-page report a three-page report what kind of motherboard you have what firmware are you running on what kind of drivers what kind of components you have how much RAM you have what operating system you have basic stuff so that needed to be attached and also any kind of supporting documents screenshots what's happening with the PC so I actually had no blue screen but what I had is every time my PC crashed randomly, I had an event log uh, saying event 41 happened in Windows, uh, which says the PC shut down uh, without the clean uh, shutdown. It crashed randomly and it's most likely power related, which is not, but we'll get into that later. So on August the 14th, uh, I submitted this case and it took Intel seven days to respond. And the first response from Intel, I'm gonna read that so I can be 100% accurate and uh, not getting in trouble uh, in any shape or form, uh, potential in the future. So in seven days, I got a couple questions. How long will you be able to use the processor before you encounter this issue? Is this a new issue? Uh, have you experienced it right uh, after you bought it? No, I was able to use the CPU for three months. Then uh, the last month in July, I had one event as a random crash. Uh, then uh, the Vinci Resolve started crashing randomly, but not the whole entire PC. But in August, first week was August, uh, in a couple of days, I had one random crash when the whole entire PC crashed and rebooted itself and then uh, it happened once a day and then it happened multiple times a day I think it scaled up to about six times a day I could not leave my PC on uh, without coming back and find it that it's crashed so uh, the second question have you made any recent changes to the device no absolutely not everything is identical I haven't changed anything except I did some BIOS updates I was aware that this might be a problem with uh, this particular CPU and was trying to do all the right things, uh, changing settings uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a BIOS and a motherboard, just to make sure it's not uh, overvolted, it's not overclocked, everything runs on Intel default. I was keep checking Intel, keep checking Gigabyte, uh, what's coming out, and nothing really helped. Uh, it wasn't uh, clarified if this was a new setup. Uh, can you confirm when the CPU was purchased? So I had the 12900K in my PC for two years. I had zero crashes, zero issues, rock solid, never had any problem. Uh, everything is unchanged. 
I lifted out this 1200K uh, CPU out of my system about four months ago and put this 14900K in it. And for three months, I, I explained it worked great. And then I started having these uh, crashes. And just for a safe measure, after even had the latest BIOS and settings what Intel was requiring or recommending uh, with, with the motherboard manufacturer, I put the 1209K back in. For two days, I had no crashes. I could not believe that I can edit a video until three o'clock in the morning in DaVinci Resolve, leave everything there uh, as it is and come back in the morning at 7 or 7.30 in the morning, see if the rendering was finished and it was finished and up and running uh, with the 14900K. This was no longer an option for me. It crashed all the time. I couldn't even have a lunch break without the crash. So uh, why Intel was asking and waiting for these four questions to be answered, uh, they also said, like, just to cut down communication back and forth, I'm going to give you two options. If your CPU is eligible for a warranty replacement, here's option one, st standard warranty replacement. Uh, you're going to send a defective unit back to us. We're going to take three to five days to process business days, make sure the paperwork is all clear, ready to go, and two more days for shipping. So in six to seven business days, turn around, you can have a replacement CPU or option two, uh, if you really need a CPU uh, cross shipping, it, it means that in the same time, in 24 to 72 hours, uh, we're going to send you out a brand new CPU and you're going to have some time to, sh to ship uh, the faulty CPU back to us. This process will cost you $25 non-refundable fee. However, we're going to charge your credit card uh, with the full amount for a new CPU in case your old CPU not going back to us. I understand that. I know it's pretty inconvenient if you don't have a second CPU like myself. Like right now, uh, this CPU is running in my computer and the computer works flawlessly. So uh, on the very next day, August the 22nd, uh, I answered every single question uh, Intel was requiring. So on the next day, August the 23rd, Intel sent me this short message. We will uh, proceed with the replacement uh, of your Intel 4900K CPU. Again, there were no troubleshooting, uh, no reinstalling the operating system, uh, no replacing a motherboard. They asked for absolutely nothing. They said, uh, based on one screenshot, and based on that, they saw my uh, BIOS was up to date on a required level. I don't think there is even a newer BIOS uh, ever since then from Gigabyte. Maybe they know exactly based on serial numbers where could be the problematic uh, processors. Maybe uh, the support person who I work with is just processed this way. It was much easier going than other support persons. I, I don't know. Maybe they definitely overwhelmed because as soon as you log in, there is a yellow banner on the website saying like we are dealing with with extremely high cases so there's going to be delay so back to this uh, the next day August the, the 23rd Intel said like yes we are replacing your CPU 10 minutes later a new message from Intel we have an update for you I was able to successfully validate that your product is still under warranty however at the moment due to stock uh, availability issues we don't have an actual same part replacement as well as higher but terrible replacement and normally it will take four to five weeks uh, to get our stock filled up again uh, we would like to know if you are willing to wait three to four weeks and circle back to us and see what we can do uh, to allow you time to respond we're going to check your response on august the 27th which is four extra day from uh the 23rd when i received this message so uh, three days later, uh, I send my uh, response in it. Uh, thank you for the update. Do I have any other option? Are you going to send me a new CPU in four to five weeks, which will potentially fail in the same way as this one in a few months? Uh, do I have a refund option or do I have another option in a future option to get a voucher or something like that and get a new ultra CPU when they come in out, even if I have to put some money on the top of this? Um, as Intel promised, uh, on the 27th, they responded, and this is what they said. Uh, we have excellent news. Now we have uh, the 4900K CPU in stock. Uh, we would like to uh, proceed with the standard warranty replacement as you requested. And uh, here's how it's going to look like. First, you're going to get uh, two emails from us. One is a confirmation that your uh, option one standard warranty replacement request is in place. And after 24 hours, we'll get a second email, a soft copy of the return document uh, and, and the shipping label. So... 
27th i was waiting for four days and i did not get the shipping label also didn't get any kind of respond uh, from intel if i'm gonna get a, a, a significantly uh, tested good cpu in warranty so i don't have to do this whole thing uh, uh again from from scratch so uh august the 31st hey i haven't got the shipping label and uh, how do we know the new CPU, the replacement will be not faulty? Uh, September the 1st, uh, Intel responded, I apologize for the delay, I'm sending this UP return label as soon as possible. Why do you need this? Uh, because I'm sending back a $600 CPU, even if it's faulty, it's not worth technically much, but if it gets lost, uh, I have to buy a new CPU. So it's better if Intel giving me the return label, it has its own insurance, own a tracking number, they know exactly where is the CPU at, what happened to it is not my responsibility once I pack this up and it's ready to go. Regarding the CPU replacement, we have quality control uh, process in place to minimize the chances to receiving a faulty product. And however, if you have any problem, uh, let us know right away and we'll uh, work uh, with you to resolve this promptly. Please make sure you're running on the latest microcode as soon as you receive the new CPU. Is the 0x129 at this point. Uh, a day later, I received a shipping label and today is the fifth. Uh, the fourth, they send me a uh, uh, a reminder that we are waiting for uh, your CPU to be shipped back to us. So the most surprising uh, part in this whole process is how easy and how little to non troubleshooting Intel is actually required from my end. I don't know if that's going to be the case for all of you uh, or not. Uh, the other thing is uh, the wait time. When this is going to be all said and done, it's going to be five to six weeks easily. Uh, we already passed three weeks. Once they receive the processor, it's going to be like another six to seven business days. I'm assuming it's going to be more. So I'm assuming this is going to be five to six weeks. I'm going to make a follow-up video once I have the actual CPU. Again, I'm not in a rush because I'm running on a 1200 9K as right now and no issues whatsoever. So how do, you, how do I know this is not a power issue? This is not a power supply issue, not a motherboard issue, RAM issue. I'm again very fortunate uh, I have two extra desktop I had access to a Dell XPS uh, desktop uh, the latest version and also had a Dell Optiplex uh, 720 and as soon as I installed the 14900k CPU into them they are crashing right away with event 41 with the Optiplex in a BIOS there is absolutely nothing uh, Dell already issued uh, an updated BIOS uh, to combat all the, the 13 and 14 generation potential CPU issues, uh, I think August the 16th. And uh, yeah, as I cannot even run Geekbench uh, in, in the XPS or the Optiplex, they crashing right away. So that is, uh, that is 100% uh, matching with my experience on my custom built PC. So that was very easy. The frustrating part is uh, when I started collecting information on a potential warranty replacement, uh, I went into some of the, the topics when there are uh, way more experts than I am uh, and uh, and uh, the response what I was getting back is a there is no issues with the CPUs it's all the uh, the issues only uh, with uh, users who doesn't know how to set up their their high-end CPU uh, Intel if there is an Intel issue in a scale like this they're never gonna replace my CPU in warranty because they're gonna go bankrupt there is no way they're gonna have enough processors to sell processors uh, for for all the manufacturers and and all the uh, uh, the OEMs plus uh, dealing with a mass amount of uh, returns in the same time which uh, we can see that could be problematic depends on what's on stock or what not and and this is uh the, the fault of the the motherboard manufacturers who were pushing these high limits to the cpu automated overclocking and all that stuff so technically it's either a user fault my fault or the fault of the manufacturer uh, and uh, and intel will not gonna do anything i get so many comments and it's so frustrating if i spend 600 bucks uh, on a flagship cpu and a 200 300 dollar on a decent motherboard uh, it should be not required for me uh, to install all these bios a lot of bios was completely uh, messed up by uh, by uh, the manufacturer uh, there were some uh, bios versions which was completely rolled back and disappeared 
and I can't I can't believe how many places that uh, the ball got dropped but it's definitely not the end user issue and if anybody tells you that this is your issue that is not uh, please just check your warranty and if you have any concern you paid uh, a good amount of money to have a solid system uh, don't hesitate and and send a ticket in this is what I made this video uh, Intel has no idea I have this YouTube channel I have 1300 subscribers not only that uh, I'm sure they're not checking anything but again I created this support ticket under my personal account which cannot be traced in here if you have any question regards of this process if I missed anything out of this video you have a different experience please let me know in the comment section and as always thank you so much for your time and I'll see you in the next video Scott's out